There are some great stories out there and given the right conditions, most people can tell them naturally. However, it's not always that easy in front of a camera. In this video, we look at how to conduct an interview and how to get the best from the subject. This will include some technical issues such as sound and lighting. But just as important is whether you can help someone feel comfortable in telling their own story fluently. While setting up an interview, it helps to be aware of just how many different things are going on. And it's one of those situations where it's really helpful to get somebody else involved. We're going to use an example of an interview from some media training that Janet and I offer, where Open University academics get the opportunity to put together a showreel. So, could you tell me who you are and what it is that you do? I'm a lecturer in a biological psychology. The interview took in place China. at the Open University in the main cafeteria because it visually linked to Rosa's topic and was available and fairly quiet. For the interview, we were able to use strong natural daylight to come in through the windows, which was mixed with artificial light from the building, so we didn't need to set up any studio lights. Whilst the camera is being set up, Janet spends time with Rosa to go over the questions and help her relax. We rigged Rosa up with a clip-on microphone to get good sound. A radio mic is good for picking up the sound of the person it's attached to, but the interviewer's voice will be poorly recorded. This was fine, as the purpose of this interview was to get good, self-contained answers from the interviewees. Another option is to use a boom pole with a directional mic. This means that the mic can be placed close to whoever's talking. I'm going to stop you there. Eye lines are very important. As a general rule, it's good if people just look to the side of the camera towards the interviewer. Janet will stay quiet while Rosa speaks to keep the interviewee's sound clean and thus allowing additional editing options. To show she's interested in the interview, she keeps an eye contact and occasionally nods in agreement. However, in this clip, we wanted to show you how to conduct an interview with the interviewer on camera too. So we added Janet's parts afterwards. With two or more people, eye lines are even more important. If they don't match, it can look very wrong. The basic rule is that the camera stays on one side of an imaginary line that is drawn between the centre of the two subjects. Whichever side of the line I film from, it will give me editable material. How exactly? If I cross the line, the subjects, when edited together, will look like they are speaking to someone else. I was always interested in the kind of bridge between psychology and biology. So how um, do biological factors influence our behaviour? For her showreel, Rosa did a piece to camera which was more challenging and required extra preparation. She was very good but still needed encouragement and support. As doing several takes, we still had to remind her to smile. To introduce movement into the piece, I decided to do a tilt-up from the food in the cafe, as Rosa walked into shot talking. Once she had finished, she exited on the right side of the frame. When she enters into the next shot, it would edit nicely if she was to enter from the left-hand side. Because the Open University training was for OU employees, there was no need for consent forms, but we did give them the opportunity to look at their showreels for their approval. It's worth remembering that you need many heads in production, and that if you're lucky enough to have some help, the key to success is good communication. Thank <laughs> you.